Hello and welcome to Foreign Affairs Focus. I'm Jonathan Tepperman, Managing Editor. We're very lucky to have with us today Vali Nasser. As many of you know, Vali Nasser wears many hats. He's a prolific author on the Muslim world. He is a professor at Tufts and until recently was a high-level advisor to the U.S. State Department. Vali, I want to start by asking you about Iran. Tensions uh, with Washington seem like they're at an all-time high. Whose fault is this? Well, largely, uh, it's the failure of a policy that has been followed since the Bush administration, which is that uh, you can keep escalating sanctions in the hope that you would bring Iranians to the table. The Iranians have not come to the table, and the sanctions have now reached a point where they're no longer sanctions, they're really beginnings of an open conflict with Iran. So uh, you could blame it re really on a failed policy and, and a failed assumption that sanctions, A, can be stable, mm -hmm. and B, that sanctions will work. Well, I want to ask you uh, about that latter point. The uh, sanctions, of course, have not worked with Iran in the past, but the administration has been saying this time it's going to be different, both because the sanctions themselves are different and because oh, international cooperation is at a greater level. Uh, tell us, first of all, if, if the administration is correct in this assessment, are these sanctions qualitatively different from what we've seen before, and B, are they working? Yes, they are qualitatively different because they're really go f going for the jugular of, of, the, of the government, in other words, the source of income, and they really are working to cut Iran out of the oil market long run by ending contracts and encouraging other countries to step in and fill in for the void that Iranian oil will leave. The problem is that they work in terms of uh, applying massive pressure. They're not really working in terms of changing Iran's behavior. And I think actually they're going to be counterproductive because Iran now has an incentive to accelerate to nuclear capability rather than come to the table and negotiate. And is it the sanctions that are responsible for or, or, newly aggressive Iranian moves like this threat to close the Straits of Hormuz? Yes, because I think the Iranians have decided they're not going to get anything at the negotiations table. If they come to the table, none of the sanctions are really going to be removed. And after a year and a half, two years of even successful negotiations, they will be weak. And then they will be susceptible to a Libya scenario where their people can rise up and the West is going to actually take the side of the people and not reward the government for negotiations. And I think there's been a high-level decision in Iran that it's better to stop the sanctions now by creating a deterrence against the West. First of all, disabuse the Obama administration of the belief that it can apply sanctions and more sanctions without cost and a blowback. And they're hoping that the more aggressive they are, the more the administration may think twice about, uh, about going forward with the sanctions. But why uh, do what they're doing now, which is effectively threaten to start a war that they know they can't win? Well, they are, they are facing a no-win situation. If they don't do anything, they're going to be put in a big hole with the sanctions. And the U.S. is going to keep adding pressure and pressure. And then the regime's survival will come into risk. And at the, at, at the other side, as you're saying, they could also escalate tensions and risk war. I think they have made the calculation that it is better to, uh, uh, you know, shot, shoot a cross across, uh, you know, the West is uh, um, bow and, and uh, get their attention and get them to back off potentially than to risk the sanctions being implemented and then being put in a position of having to undo them through negotiations. So the sanctions aren't working and uh, the Iranians are hell-bent in moving as quickly as possible towards a bomb. What should the American uh, position or policy be? Well, I think first thing is to actually recognize that this particular strategy of sanctions leading to talks and ending the problem is not going to work. So you either go to war, which I don't think is a good idea, given that Iran is a country of 70, 80 million, where it's located, oil, etc., or you have to get really serious about negotiations. And I don't believe the Obama administration, contrary to common perception, has ever been serious about negotiations. I mean, they, they sort of threw a uh, opener by writing to the supreme leader and uh, addressing the Iranian people. But other than a 45-minute conversation in Geneva, there was n really no effort put into negotiation. We've spent more time uh, getting the Taliban to the table than getting the Iranians to the table. So you would advocate more engagement? I would advocate, you know, doing the job of diplomacy. Diplomacy is tedious, it's difficult, it's fraught with risk, it requires leadership, 
and is always a danger of it collapsing. But it means continuous engagement. If a door closes, you find another door to go through. But ultimately, there is no substitute for that kind of a you know, grinding work of diplomacy, and that has been largely absent. We've not relied on diplomacy to ir bring Iranians to the talks. We've relied on pressure to bring them to and the And do talks. you think a democratic president can afford to do this in an, an election year? Well, that's part of the tragedy, that this whole thing is blowing up in an election year. And uh, it's very clear the Republicans don't want to talk about Afghanistan or about Al-Qaeda because that's uh, the president's strength, having killed Osama bin Laden. They want to talk about Iran uh, because Iran now is seen as a failure of the Obama administration. But this is really a failure of the Bush administration who instituted this policy. The Obama administration merely embraced it. Uh, and, 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 but, but we have to recognize that this policy is at its end. It doesn't benefit us if the administration keeps saying, no, it's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, just give it a little bit more time, a little bit more pressure, it's going to work. It's not going to work. It actually runs the danger of uh, bring, bringing to the fore the very eventuality the administration was hoping to avoid, which is war. So let me ask you about that eventuality. I know what you think should happen. What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to see a war with started by either the United States or Israel in the next 12 months? I think it, we, we're, the likelihood of a war is, a, is an accidental war. You know, it's a war that comes as a consequence of a gradual escalation around the misunderstanding, around the mishap, uh, because of the heightened tension between two countries that don't have a hotline between them and are deeply suspicious of one another. I don't think the United States would like to start a war. But if, if we don't see war in the next 12 months, we really have to begin to uh, uh, get, go back to the drawing board and think about how we're going to deal with Iran, the other side of the mushroom cloud, and sort of a North Korea, uh, Pakistan scenario with Iran. Bali, that's all we have time for. Thanks so much for talking to Thank us. Thank you.